Hi, having looked at basic formulae and also relative cell referencing, we're now going to dramatically change things up and talk about built-in functions and instead absolute cell referencing. Similar ideas, but these are following on from the previous video, so make sure you have seen that and are comfortable with those topics. We'll also, looking at this, uh, mention sorting and sh I'll show you how to sort across multiple columns as well. For this demonstration, what I've done is gone onto Apple's website and I've copied down a few details of some of their products. It's a good thing to do if you want to feel jealous um, looking at some of the prices and so on. So what this scenario might be, maybe you've got a certain budget and you are looking at different products, maybe you've got some money to spend and you feel like buying some things and you might put them into a spreadsheet to keep track and also compare different products maybe. People certainly do use Excel quite a lot for keeping track of various expenses, planning for holidays, buying a new car and mortgages and so on, just keeping track of finances more generally. So this scenario isn't totally artificial. We've looked at how we can format tables like this, so I won't dwell on this too much. Let's say we want to add on a a, a sum column. Maybe in this scenario you want to, you know, you've chosen these five products and you want to see how much your bill is going to be. You could add a sum um, cell maybe down here and what we could do based on the last video we could do equals and click cell E3 plus cell E4 plus 5 and so on and so on press enter and we get our final result that is only for the first three that's quite tedious I got bored of doing that immediately so instead we can use another another function which is um, different to plus because it can take more data more easily and that is sum if you go to the formulas tab at the top like I showed in the last video, there are loads and loads of built-in functions which do a very specific thing usually. And we could have written these functions ourselves using just those five basic operations we looked at in the last video pretty much. But thankfully someone has done this for us. It's built into the software so we don't have to waste our time programming um, a complicated function which is done for us. The ones we're going to look at in this video are not particularly complicated, we'll look at more advanced ones in future videos, but they are quite useful, in fact, very useful. Sum being one of them. So sum is a function, if I just delete this, because that was nonsense. As always, we're doing a formula, so we start off with an equal sign. If I type in sum, I have a lowercase, uppercase. You can see once I start typing, I get a little prompt with some other formulas which are um, available to us, other uh, functions I should say. Uh, we can ignore these for now, even if there are some similar ones. And you'll see the little guidance which pops up, we are meant to put our first number, comma, our second number, and so on. So we could do that. We could do, you know, click 4119, comma, um, click 769, that'll get E3 and E4 respectively, and so on, but that's not much quicker than doing what we did before. Of course, summing is just multiple additions. So instead we can just drag over the selected cells we want. So drag from E3 through to E7. And when we do a selection like this, if I just close off this bracket and press enter to hide that, um, and if I click, we can see we've got E3 colon E7. So this colon, you can read as being through. So we're going through E3 to E7 like this. And so it's selecting all the data for us. It's a little bit quicker than doing it each cell individually. Well, much quicker if you've got a huge table, of course. And so what it's doing is just adding up each individual item inside this selection. E3 through to E7. And our total is 4,566 pounds. So actually what we could do is we could convert the data types here um, from just general, uh, general as it is at the moment, we can convert it to currency so we can see the pounds and it becomes a little bit more uh, useful for our purpose. Another commonly used function is the min function, so the minimum value in this selection. So if I now type in min, not mum, uh, min, and again do the exact same thing, select my items, close with my bracket, press enter. And this will find the lowest item in this list, which is the watch series three of £199. That's the lowest item it finds. It's just checking through each item to see which one is the lowest. Exact same with the max, except of course it's finding the largest. So let's just do max quickly, open this one up and drag down. By the way, what we're doing now, we're, we're still doing relative cell referencing. We'll do absolute in a bit, a bit later. And the maximum here is 2,700. Uh, this one, because I didn't change it, is still, uh, was still general, so let's just add, in fact, let's just add in um, our two decimal points using this button up here. And finally, the fourth and final one we'll look at today is average. So average um, is very different types of averages. This one is the mean. So I type in average, 
if I can spell it like this. Same idea again, we just select our data inside our brackets and close it off and press enter and we get our average. So what this mean average is doing is adding up all of these, taking the sum and then dividing by how many we've got. So we can verify this if we want to by just going, well, the sum is this divided by how many have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five. And that should be the same value as it is over here, which it is. So perhaps we want to format this a bit better. We might want to change the names here. This might be often called total. This might be the lowest price. This is the highest price. And this might be the average price. Um, let's click it twice to get inside and change it. Double click, average price. Like that, maybe we want to make these bold and black and um, highlighted uh, like it was at the top because these are really just uh, headings and add in our borders to this, select all of this, add in our borders up here. And it's a little awkward extension to our table like that. What I can do if I immediately want to mess up my formatting is use my fill handle to drag across. So if I drag this to the left, what this will do is now, because we're doing relative cell referencing, it will work out the sum of my storage capacity column which doesn't fully make sense because this one is now a, um, a currency, which it isn't. This is in terms of gigabytes. If I just add this at the top and make sure this is big enough. So I wanna change this back to, we could do just a number or we could do general like that. Um, that's the same sort of thing. Uh, we can do the same with these two. But if we dragged it the other way with my key feature column, I get zero pounds because it's trying to work out, it's trying to sum all of this text and it can't sum text because the data type is wrong. You can't add up text in the same way that you can add up numbers like we could with the price and capacity column. It'll work okay with the years because the years are treated at the moment like numbers. If I put in a proper date, it would work a little bit differently. Uh, but again, it won't work with my product name because they are letters, uh, because they're text and not numbers. But let's just do undo to get rid of that mess. And now let's talk about absolute cell referencing. Let's say we've been given, we've been very lucky and have been given, I don't know, a budget of what could we say, a thousand pounds? It's quite a nice budget and we want to spend it on some Apple products. We might, want, we might want to see what products we can afford. And now there may be smarter ways of doing this, but we could always just add a column on and call this um, uh, remaining budget. And we want to find out how much money we'd have left over if we buy each of these products. Again, not a great example, but it, it could, could be useful to us maybe. By the way, you can add in images just by pasting them in. Let's get rid of this Apple logo, bit of a distraction. So what I want to do, I want to just subtract our price from my budget for each of these. Let's change this to a, a currency. So it fits in. Okay, first of all, I put in equals. That's how we always start our formula. And I click my budget, E13 here. And I want to subtract my first price for the iPhone SE. Click this, sell. And now press enter, and this is fine. 580, 581 pounds left, which is okay. But if I now drag this down, if I use the fill handle to drag this down, trying to save myself some time, we get, well, it looks initially like it's working okay, but actually if we examine this a bit more in more detail, we'll notice it's a bit dodgy because here we have a minus. Why do we have a minus here? Because we should be able to afford the iPad Pro. We have got enough money left over. Why have we got a minus here? It's because if we look at what is referencing in the formula bar, E14 is down here. So E14 is below our budget cell. And so really it's doing zero minus 769, hence we get minus 769 pounds. Same with the other ones here. So actually it's not working because the fill handle has mistakenly gone forward because it's followed the pattern. So really a relative cell reference has not worked there. Instead, we've got to do an absolute cell reference. So I think of it as locking in the value we want to select. So we're happy with our price changes as we go down, but we're not happy with our budget changes as we go down. We want to keep the budget value fixed, but the prices can move as well. So what we do instead, to do an absolute cell reference, let's do it in our first cell over here. You add a dollar sign to your, your cell name. So add a dollar sign. E13 is the one we're trying to lock. And when you add a dollar sign before your letter, this is locking just the horizontal direction. So let's try this, let's press enter now, having added that dollar sign. And let's do the fill handle again, just on the top of it. And it's exactly the same, nothing's changed because we have locked our horizontal direction, but then the autofill was not doing it in the horizontal direction. The issue was it was going down here, it was going vertically. And so instead we actually need to lock our 
our uh, vertical movement and we do that by adding a dollar sign before the number not before the letter so actually if we get rid of the dollar sign before the letter and now press enter again and again do the full handle again it will fix itself and it will become how you want it the final one is an, is a, still a minus because the MacBook Pro is so expensive so you can make just the horizontal or vertical direction locked but equally you can add the dollar sign before both if you want to make sure the actual cell stays completely fixed. In our case, it didn't matter so much, but it may matter in other cases if you're moving in both directions. So um, I don't think that actually uh, saved, but that's fine. So I've just added a dollar sign before both my letter and my number, and that means we're using an absolute reference, not a relative reference. Okay, let's do another example. Let's say Apple have got a student discount, which they do, but I'm not sure if it's a fixed percentage. Let's say this is a discount of 10%. So I can set 0.1 and then change it to a percentage if I want to show off, if I can use that. Uh, same sort of idea, maybe we should do a column which is um, discounted price, like that. Let's just make sure we've got our formatting, let's just add formatting to this, add in our, our grid. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to work out what the discount would be if I apply the 10% discount on our original price over here. So what I could do, because we're trying to reduce the price, I could equally multiply, um, so what I could do, I could do equals and go in brackets one minus the value down here, which is 0.1 in E15, then multiply this with our first price over here. Because, you know, we were trying to do a discount, we can multiply 0.9, 90% times our original price is the same as applying a 10% discount. So we try this, this would be our discounted value. Uh, equally, I could go back and do instead, first of all, work out what the actual discount is by multiplying our discount times our original price. So just this on its own would be the actual discount we get from it. And then of course we can uh, subtract this from our original price. So just adding this again, and then minus, make sure we have brackets because for bod mass, uh, we'll keep it consistent, press enter, and the same price we get. And now, same issue with our budget column. If I drag this down using the fill handle, the prices we get look fine, but actually we'll see they do not really work. So if I check this one, and the issue is sometimes you'll you'll see it and it works, but actually it's not always working as you expect. Uh, some, sometimes you, really get, you will get an error. Uh, so this one I can see I get E16 uh, times E4. So E16 is again, down below the actual cell we want. And so we need to lock this cell by using an absolute reference, not a relative one. So I click this and I can just go to E15 and add a dollar sign before my letter and then before my number to make sure it is fully locked. Press enter. And now if I drag down my fill handle again, make sure you do it twice, it will update and these will be the actual discounts. And the power of referencing is that we can very, very quickly update our values without having to go through and do the same calculations again and again. If I change this, imagine Apple are very, very generous all of a sudden and set it's 95%, 96%, because I mistype. Uh, suddenly our discounts become uh, huge and we can definitely afford it. Maybe we want to update our budget based on these new prices. I can simply go over here and instead of focusing on uh, the ease column for our prices down here, I can change this to be instead, I want it, instead of E3, I want it to be H3 down here. Press enter and again use my fill handle to drag down and update my um, prices over here based on the new discounted price. And suddenly I've got loads of money left in the budget because Apple have been so generous. So in summary, if we have a value in a formula which needs to remain fixed, even if other aspects of the formula need to change and follow a pattern, we need to make sure we use absolute cell referencing by adding a dollar sign before the letter and the number or one or the other, depending on your context, to make sure that that value remains fixed, even as your calculations maybe move to other cells. One final thing we may want to do to our table is to sort it in some way. Perhaps we want to sort it by price or sort it by release year. So maybe I want to have the oldest product first and the uh, newest product last. So what I can do is, thankfully again, Excel does a lot of the work for us. You can think of uh, you can think of sort as a built-in function, except it works in a different way because we can go straight to the data tab at the top. And over in the sort and filter group, we have a sort button. If you just click the cell you want to focus in on, so say uh, the first cell in our release year, there are two buttons here. One is for descending and one is for ascending. So if I click the first one, which I believe is for uh, 
ascending, so it would have the, the lowest first, or the first letter in the alphabet if it was a, a text. Um, and if you see, it, it, um, it swapped all of the rows. So it doesn't just change for one column, it changes all of them. So thankfully none of the data gets lost, it does all a line up. If I go back, you'll notice that the watch series three row is the same, it's just in a different place now. So it, it swaps the entire table around, it doesn't ruin any of the data. So if I could, if I do the same thing with our key feature column, maybe with um, descending this time, it would do it alphabetically as opposed to numerically. Um, so that's fine, we can do that um, and order it by date like that. But say we want to also sort on a different column as well. So over here we've got, within 2019, we've got two products, MacBook Pro and the iPad Air. The MacBook Pro is more expensive than the iPad Air, so perhaps we want to make these ordered so that actually the cheapest one comes first. Likewise, with the iPad Pro and the iPhone SE, both in 2020, the more expensive one comes first, perhaps we want this to be done separately while also maintaining the release year. So what we can do is we can add a sort on multiple columns. So we can do this by now clicking this sort button here, which allows us to add more details. And by the way, notice how when I clicked it, it selected this entire thing for me. It's selecting what it believes is our table. So that's interesting. We'll see how this, uh, we'll see what it does in a second. So first of all, we're sorting by release, release year, smallest to largest, which is what we want. I can now add a separate level. So once it sorts by release year, it will then sort by whatever other level we want to add. So I want to add that it sorts by the price. And I want it to be, uh, in this case, smallest to largest as well. So if I press OK, watch really carefully what happens. It works up here, right? We've got, um, in fact, yeah, it works up here. We've got our cheapest first and our most expensive. But I noticed that actually down here, our sort of summary section got damaged because what it did, when I did this sort, it selected the entire thing, not just the table we want. We want these values to be left. We don't want these to be sorted because uh, that's not just, that's not how it works. These are separate to the main body of our table. So let's do undo on that one, otherwise we might lose some of our data. So instead, I'm going to now just select this entire table, just the part we want. Do the same thing again, go to sort. We've already got the release year sorted smallest to largest, which is great. Add another level this time. Do the exact same thing again, price and smallest to largest, click OK. And now this bit stays the same, thankfully, but this bit now is sorted how we want it to be. So within a single year, we have it now in terms of lowest to highest as well. This try now may require a bit of thinking, but it does rely on all of the stuff we've looked at so far. In fact, mostly just this video and the last video. So what I've got here is a snippet of a Premier League football league table, and we are missing some values. So first of all, I'll need you to complete this table by filling in the values using some of the functions and referencing techniques we've looked at so far. Uh, by the way, in the description, there'll be a link to this spreadsheet, so you don't have to copy this out. And also, once you've done this, do some sorting on this table. First of all, sort it by points, so that the team with the most points is in the first place, is at the top of the table. And then also, if there are teams drawing on points, um, then you sort by games won, and both of these sorts will be in descending order. But first of all, we're trying to sort by points, and then by games won. So have a go at this. There'll be a link in the description to this file.